Good evening and welcome everybody. Thank you for joining us this evening and being here for with us. Um, we're very grateful and excited to have everybody here and join us this evening. Um, so we're doing a little bit different tonight. Lynn and I are your guests and we've got some exciting things to share with you to do over the holidays, whether you're a parent or a grandparent or um, an educator. So we've got some exciting things to share that you guys can do over the next couple weeks, whether you're at home with your children or um, you're in a center with children or however it is, we've got some great ideas to share. And um, before we get started, we're going to bring Dawn in from, oh, actually, no, sorry. Sorry, Emily and Cindy, we're going to have you guys talk first. Sorry. Oh, go first? Okay. Do you want to go first? You want me to no, go first? Cool. I'll go first. Hi, everyone. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. If you can't tell, we are live. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Um, as Megan said, um, I'm Emily, and this is my lovely mom, Cindy. And we are at the Websters, and I am the social media coordinator for Scholar's Choice. And I'm going to do kind of our quick run through of little housekeeping things and little notes just so we're all on the same page. If you have any questions during the webinar, please make sure to put it in the comments, or you can change. On the very bottom, there's a chat mode on your right in the comment box. Please do Q&A mode and ask your question. I'm here to help you the entire time. So if you're returning, it's nice to see you. If you're new here, hi, we're very happy to have you. So all the housekeeping things, they're very basic, but they're very important. So if you have any connection issues, I am very sorry. It is most definitely not an us problem, sadly. It is a I don't want to say you problem, but your internet's problem. So what I suggest is go sit as close to your router as humanly possible, or if you have a cable, just plug it into the side. If you need assistance, find someone who is technologically capable in your home to help you. It makes all the difference in the world. And if you do happen to miss anything we talked about in the webinar or you cut in and out, please don't worry about that. We send a follow-up email tomorrow, probably mid-afternoon with all of our resources, all of our slides, all of our information, anything that's shared tonight. So please make sure to keep that in mind. And also you'll be sending a copy of this webinar so you can share it with your friends if you enjoyed it, but also if you can watch it again if you missed anything. So please make sure to keep that in mind. If you do have any connection issues, like I said, sit close or at the very top, there's a refresh button. Make sure to hit that or refresh your browser. It'll be totally okay. Don't worry about it, just keep chugging. If you watch this whole webinar, so if you stay with us the entire hour, which I highly advise you do, there's lots of great information, lots of great activities. We will be sharing, make sure to do that because at the end, if you stay the whole time, all the way through the Q&A, don't miss the Q&A. There's a lot of good information there, I promise. It may not seem like it, but there is. Lots of great conversations happening in Q&A. And that speaking of Q&A is if you ask your questions, we will be answering them. So make sure if you have any questions, please do ask them because we are here to ask Megan and Lynn and we will get you anything that you need. And that being said, since you watched the entire webinar, you will be receiving a certificate. And how you receive the certificate is we will be sending you a follow-up email and I will post it in the chat. There will be a, what do they call them? A survey, a survey, word. <laughs> there will be a survey. So you just have to fill up the questions and just let us know how you thought we did, if you enjoyed this, any feedback you have, we're here to keep getting better and keep getting the topics you want out there. So make sure to, of that feedback form, I will be putting it in the chat at the end and we'll send the email with that. So, got that. Um, yeah, if you have questions, make sure you can there, throw them in the chat. I will be there answering them the whole way through. If you do have any issues with the webinar at any point, please email webinar at scholarschoice.ca or you can email me, Emily Webster at scholarschoice.ca. I am happy to help you as well. And I think that's all I got. <laughs> A long fancy ramble. <laughs> I talked fast. I just, you know, so say. again, welcome everyone, and we're so happy to see everyone join us again tonight. And I'm looking at where everybody's from, so all across Canada, and uh, so many um, familiar names. So welcome back. Um, I just uh, wanted to update you on a few things as we move forward. So we are. This is our last webinar of 2020. Hard to believe, um, and a little bit sad, but we're happy to start 2021. We will be continuing with two free webinars uh, a month in 2021. Um, our first one will be uh, January uh, 12th, and then again um, the 26th. So. 
the first topic um, of the new year is uh, we're looking at new year, new routines. And then the second one will be um, let's talk science. So those are ones that you can look forward to in January. Um, so something different for 2021 is uh, we'll be launching uh, some longer webinars that will be more training and um, will be for a small fee. So we are asking you at the end of this webinar in the Q&A about um, how you feel about that. So um, there's lots to share there, but uh, we're excited because uh, we feel that, you know, we're here to serve you. Um, but we have some people that are pretty high profile um, and that will cost a little bit of money for us. And so we want to share that. So um, and they'll have lots of great information to give you and lots of programming to share within your yeah. centers. And we've already kind of started planning those. So definitely look forward to those. And if you're interested, let us know. And we'll be talking about topics for that pretty soon. And I think maybe even in the Q&A. Yes, there is uh, some, some information about that in the Q&A. Um, we're always open to listen to everybody's um, feedback and whatever webinars you're looking for. So please uh, provide us with that feedback and we're happy to help you. And uh, last but not least, I'm here to uh, welcome Dawn uh, Gilchrist here from Canadian Child Care Federation. We are so pleased to partner with them. Uh, they've been a great partner with us since the beginning of COVID and we just continue to support one another through this journey. And uh, so happy for Dawn to be here to give us a little bit of an update of what's going on and uh, welcome Dawn. That's great, Th thanks uh, Cindy, thanks Emily, thanks Megan. Um, I just saw somebody's name pop up from uh, Denver. Colorado, so uh, not just across Canada, but uh, you know, into the U.S. as well. So that's that's phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. So yeah, as as mentioned, I'm Don Giesbrecht with the Canadian Child Care Federation. It's always my pleasure to to pop onto these uh, webinars. As as uh, Cindy said, we've been working in partnership with Scholars Choice, and happy to do so, and fully appreciate um, the opportunity to to speak with all of you here today. And so, um, yeah, I mean, my goodness, um, when did we start doing this? This was in, in, in March. spring, I, in yeah, March. In April. I, mean, I guess in April we started doing webinars. Yeah, March. blink, and here we are at the end of 2020 and uh, talking about 2021, which is just uh, incredible. Um, and, you know, we, before we went live, we were talking about the fact that we were watching video of, of, of people in England getting a vaccine shot today, which is uh, quite a moment in the history that we are living through all of us right now. So, um, you know, I'm liking to think that, that we will all come out on the other side of this into a, whatever our new normal is. And so with that, um, really, you know, it's, it's amazing what, what the, the, especially I'm going to just talk about Canada's early learning and care system, because that's what I'm most versed in, of course, being with the Canadian Child Care Federation, and the amazing work um, that the sector has done to support families and support um, society through since the middle of March when COVID bro broke in Canada. And, you know, I like to say, and I, I think I said it last time as well, that, you know, you are those folks that are working in the early learning and care sector. You are the foundation that supports the foundation. You are the underlying people that have continued to support those essential service workers so that they can go and do their jobs. And without you, that didn't happen. And I just am so proud to work with such an amazing group of people who, yes, we've had some rough patches and it's not perfect yet, but we have done our sector well, we have done children well, and we have done families well, and we have continued to support the economy as well. So one, one thing I really want you to all be aware of, and if you're on our mailing list, email list, you would have received this the other day. Perhaps you didn't read it, but nonetheless, Last week, um, in the federal government's fall economic update, um, Minister Christia Freeland, finance minister, did um, on the record talk about the importance of early learning and child care for Canadian families. And I'm just going to read you one line out of her quote. And in case you didn't know as well, um, yesterday marked the 50th anniversary of the Royal Commission on the Status of Women in Canada. And that report called 50 years ago for a national system 
of early learning and care. And at that time they called it daycare. So 50 years ago, and here we are in 2020 on the tw eve of 2021, where we're just getting around to do this. So here's her, a line from her, her speech. On the eve of this anniversary, that being the, the 50th anniversary, the federal government is committed to historic investments that will make this promise a reality. Budget 2021 will have an outline, a plan to provide affordable, accessible, and high quality childcare from ocean to ocean to ocean. Wow. So that's big. That's big. Now, of course, there's so many details yet to come and, and what does this look like and how do we get ourselves from this promise to a really amazing future? Those details have to be worked out, but I can tell you it'll still take a lot of us who have been doing this work for a long time, a lot more work to get there. But I am really excited about this. You should all be excited about this, whether you're a parent who uses childcare or whether you work in the sector, this is a big moment in Canadian history, and it couldn't have come at a better time as we close out a very challenging year and look forward into 2021. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there we have it. Yep, we got some wows in the uh, chats. Yeah. yeah. That was, was great. Thank you, Don, so much. Um, you always find something great to say and share, and you are always a cheerleader for our sector, yeah. and it's yeah. amazing. Thank you very much. And My everybody, pleasure. I know Emily put the link in there. So yep. thank you, you, Emily. You can um, join up and you can become a member. They share many great, wonderful things. I know myself and Lynn, we are both members of them, and it's amazing the stuff they share. So please go on and uh, have a look at their site. I know they are redoing their site, right, Don? It's coming. This weekend, I'm being, <laughs> I've got it written in stone <laughs> that we are going live. And I, Megan, Emily, Cindy, I will share it with you once it's live. Oh, wow. But if you want to connect with them in the meantime, definitely join their Facebook group. There's a lot of great thank information. That yeah, goes oh, on yeah. There. yeah, for sure. Oh, I would, I would great stuff. So, but thank you again, Don. Um, thank thank you. you very much for sharing this with us. For you oh, know, we are not going to see you again. So Merry yeah. Christmas. Yes, happy, happy, holidays. happy holidays to all of you and to everybody here. Yeah. Um, a thousand people on the. It's just it's just mind boggling when I see those numbers. That's just outstanding. Yeah. Thank you. So thank you very, very much, Don, Thanks. and we wish you a great holiday and stay thank safe. You, you and um, we will talk, but we will see you in 2021. <laughs> awesome. All right. Happy Take, care. Take care. Happy, Happy New Year. Year. Yes. Okay. So well, thank you, Cindy and Emily, for that. Thank we'll you. All see that. you we'll on the end. other side. <laughs> so thank, thank you, guys. Bye. <laughs> bye. 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 Okay. Well. Thank you, everybody, and thank you for joining. And um, I messed up there at the start, but oh well, we're here. <laughs> um, so, it's live. Lynn, do you want to peek your head out there so people can see you? I'm here. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> this is. Um, I'm just going to start something, guys. So, um, Lynn and I have put together some of um, our favorite key things. Um, both of us being registered ECEs, myself being a mom to two boys, Lynn being a grandma, um, both of us working in the sector for many years and being a director um, and working with Scholars Choice. Um, we've got some great ideas and with the help of um, Scholars Choice as well, of course, we put together um, some great ideas that we wanna share with you guys and knowing that there's always room to adapt and make changes, um, whether you're a grandparent or whether you're an educator in a classroom or in a childcare center, um, whether you're a mom or dad at home, um, you know, it, these will work for anybody and everybody. And um, there's always room to make changes and if you don't have a certain item it's okay um if you don't have a backyard it's okay there's always ways that we can um you know maneuver around and lynn and i are here to share those ideas and um hopefully help you guys um we want to be able to make um the best for you guys out of these holidays coming up, um, even with how different they are. Um, so yeah, we just wanna be able to share some ideas and um, hopefully be able to add some happiness and fun um, for you guys. 
So we're going to get started and, um, whoops. Yeah, what's happening? Oh my gosh. That's okay. it. See you again. Right, guys. Um, there. Oh, whoops. No. Okay. <laughs> right, guys. Okay. Got it. We're good. Okay. We're good. So one of the first ones we're going to talk about is outdoor activities. Um, so um, I've shared here a picture and um, all it is is children going out and collecting different things that they have found on their walk. Um, so whether you're at home with your children or you're they're at a center, um, even just stuff in the playground or in your backyard, um, whatever the children find, um, you can make some really cool things out of it. So when you, once they collect their items, you can just give them a dish with water. You could put water in it and then you lie your, um, whatever items that they found, whether it be on their walk or in your backyard, in their, um, outside in their playground at their child care center and put lie the items down on top of the water and then put another thing of water down and then just put it in the freezer. Um, the other thing, if it's get if it gets cold enough, um, some places it might be cold enough already, but you can even actually just leave it outside to freeze. Um, you don't even have to take it inside and put it in your freezer. So if it's cold enough where you are, you can um, just do it and, leave it outside which is great and then just it's almost like an ice cube you just pound it out of the thing and you've got a great creation that the children have made you can do it if you have different shaped pans um which is always fun you could add food coloring or um liquid colored paint to it which is always great um so that's a really fun thing and then lynn did you want to yeah um, just always make sure when you go out anywhere with a walk, even just to the car, take a bag so that they have someone to put it into. Um, it, it just makes it very, feel very special. Get a special bag or just even a bag to tap something in so they have somewhere to keep things. This, the picture the image Megan has up here, in addition to all the other great things Megan said, is these all have different smells and textures. So, you know, you'd scratch it and there's the pine smell and this looks like some sort of uh, spice. So there's that element to it as well. Yeah, so while the children have are finding things, it's a great opportunity to be able to have those conversations with them and get them really building on their language. And just having a regular conversation with your children, being able to talk to our children is so key. Um, so, I mean, again, it's not just about them picking up things and then freezing it in water. It's about having the conversations with them and asking them about the different items that they found. What does it feel like? Is it heavy? Is it light? Does it smell? Um, you know, so different things like that you can do, but a really fun activity. And it's something that you can keep switching out all winter um, to do. Add tools to it, like a hammer, hammer nails they can chip it out as well yeah so um on the next slide that we have here um so what we did is we um drew almost like a target on the wall and um so i know our little guy that's 11 um he really likes doing this and you can adjust it for younger children up to older children and we have a 16 year old so again it's a big competition because we try and see who can get the <laughs> snowball right in the middle but with our younger guy, we come up with something different all the time so again it's it's very adaptable you can move it down lower if you don't have a wall it's not a big deal you could draw something on the ground for the children um if you don't have chalk it's okay maybe you've got paint maybe you've got tape um so again many different ways to adapt it if you're out at the park you could do it um and you know it could you could change it up whether you want to hit the middle of the target maybe you want to put on each different circle different faces about how you're feeling um you could put different letters on there uh, maybe they're letters of their name um so different ways to start um doing that one um numbers. you want to no, add numbers count it and add it as well yeah for sure absolutely um 
Did you want to talk about the middle one, Lynn, the painting? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, my daughter-in-law, this is one of her favorite activities, is the, um, the, the paint and the spray bottles. But you, if you don't have those, you can use all sorts of things. These are all condiment bottles. Just to get the, you know, what happens when paint goes on the, the, on the snow? Does it melt? What patterns can you make? Just no cleanup at all. Just very easy. A lot of fun. Get those big muscles going, you know, get them interested in science and they don't know it. It's just uh, a lot of fun adding color to the snow in many different ways. Powder paints too. Just the powder as it melts. What happens that way? So a lot of conversation, um, a lot of science going on there. Yep. You, and you can even talk about mixing colors. If you yep. mix, um, you know, two colors, what's going to happen? Um, if you mix paint versus powder paint, what's going to happen to that? If you have paint that's watered down or you have it in a spray bottle versus one of the condiment bottles or any kind of bottle that you have, or even you just use a paintbrush. Um, yes. You're going to get different colors and it depends about the thickness of the paint that you have. Um, and again, you don't even, you don't have to use paint brushes. You can use no. twigs like what are in the trees here. Um, oh. that's on the table. You could use rocks, you can use pine cones, and you don't even have to have a backyard to do this. Um, you, if you have access to snow, you could even just bring a big pile of snow in a bucket and you could do it. It might be a smaller surface, but it's still achievable. You could use, um, a cookie sheet and just put snow on a cookie sheet and do it that way. Um, maybe you can go out to the park and you could do it that way. Again, you could use um, different resources that are at the park. Maybe branches have fallen off the tree and you could use those and you could just bring a couple different colors of paint. Um, so again, it's very adaptable. Um, it's something that um, most of us should be able to do just with making some modifications. Um, mm -hmm. So the next one we have is um, animal footprints, which is one of my favorites. Um, so every time we're out for a walk, whether it's the spring, winter, summer, we always talk about the different animal footprints. Our little guy is a big nature boy and um, loves the outdoor and loves animals. Um, so we're always talking about the different animal footprints that we see. Um, and then when we see them, you can talk about where do they live? What do you think they're getting? What kind of food do they eat? What kind of footprints are they? Um, and then you have, if you have different accessories, you could add into it. If they're bird footprints, maybe you have little eggs or um, circle balls or something, and you can talk about different eggs. Um, so lots of different things that you can do with um, the animal footprints. You could even try and make animal footprints yourself and That's consider right. the sizes of them. Um, yeah. yeah, that was I was yeah. thinking. Can you can you replicate it? You know, how do you think we could make this? You know, how you know if he was this big, how big do you think his footprint would be? How, could we make that and use different things in the environment? Yep, absolutely. Um, talking about like, you know, where do the birds go in the winter? Do they live here in the winter? Do they go somewhere else? Um, you know, so lots of different things, whether you're just on a walk or if you happen to have birds that go through your playground and the next morning when you come in and you do your inspection on your playground and you have the kids outside, you can be talking yeah. about it, which is great. Um, <laughs> yeah, the birds and birds. So this one, um, so the first one is um, a path, a risky path that um, Scholar's Choice actually sells, but we had done it for um, some children earlier in the fall. And the great thing I like about this is that you can add your own things. So you can make it more challenging for older children. Um, you can make it less challenging for younger children. And you can add whatever you want. You don't have to have um, a ramp. If you've got any kind of blocks or whatever you have that can give it um, depth for children to be at different heights. Um, but we had added some hula hoops and some balls. And we talked to the children about how they could get from the ramp to the first block. Did they have to jump with two feet? Once they got to the block, if you jump with one foot, can you do that? Um, 
I had done one with an older child and we put a basketball net at the end and we gave them basketballs to see how many times they could get the basketball in. Um, with this one, we had a hoop and they threw the bean bags in to see as they were going across the obstacle course. So again, it's something that's very manageable. Even if, you know, if you guys have snow where you are right now, you can make different piles mm -hmm. of snow and have them jump from that. It doesn't, you know, whatever you have, um, it, you know, we just have to make some modifications a little bit. Right. But go ahead, Lynn. Sorry. The, the, the great thing about these pieces is the children can adapt it or they can, they can create it themselves. The children yeah. are able to pick up these pieces, move it along. Again, you know, we'll put it here. Can you make it from there to there? Do you, can you jump that? Do you have to walk? Does it have to come closer? Um, lots of, you know, I like children to be very, to feel very successful. And I think they can be very successful with this and creating their own and taking pride in their work. Yeah. yeah. Which is great that if you put some stuff out there, the children will come up with a great obstacle course yeah. and they'll make yeah. one and they'll say, no, you do it. You and do it. You know, they want you to do it to see if you can do it. And they're so excited when you take part in it and they've created something that they're so excited to watch you be able to see if you can complete it, which is great. Um, so the next one is snow angels and this little girl in the leaves. Again, you don't have to have snow to do it. You could do it in leaves. My gosh, if, if all we've got is some mud outside, you know what? The kids could do it in mud, which is great. Um, so it's a lot of fun, something different for them to do. Um, I forget where I was, but anyway, the children had all made snow angels together to see what they could make. And then they were comparing the sizes and how big their arms went and how wide they could get their legs. Um, so again, just different things that you can do outside, but getting them outside in the fresh air is, it's key, it's really important, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, as Megan said, do it in your sand if you've got a sand area. I know some of them are clo or they're closed right now, but do that in the sand. Who can make bigger wings? Who yeah. is taller? You know, who, tell me who's the tallest. Um, can you make a lot? How how big can you make your skirt? So again, you're encouraging gross motor, and um, you know, just getting a feel of what my body does and where I can go with it. And then the other thing, once they're done, they could create faces on it. They could create patterns in it. Um, so in the snow, they could do that. In the mud or sand, they could do that. In the leaves, they could bring over different products. Maybe they bring over pine cones and rocks and, um, you know, whatever they have to make it a little bit different. Um, Silly eyes. Yeah. <laughs> um, so this, um, the first one in the top corner, so these are Love just um, water balloons. So if you fill up a balloon and you put food coloring in it, again, you can leave them outside if it's cold enough to freeze or put them in the freezer. And then um, once they've frozen, you just pop up a, the balloon um, and that's it, you're set to go. Um, but if you have a circle container that you can, or a square container, whatever size, I mean, it's it's great if you set up, are able to set up something outside and it's all different shapes for the children. The children mm -hmm. love it. It's something so different for them. Absolutely. Um, again, you could do different sizes, different shapes, different colors. Um, you can talk to the children about the, the weight of them and, mm -hmm look at some of them so the yellow one you can see it's almost like you can see through it where the purple one's much more darker um you, so you can very you fun. can see the yellow and the blue yeah that makes a green yeah and again it's something that you could brain inside and maybe you've got a tub inside or a bin that you could put inside for the children and as they're playing with them and they leave it and go do something else and you could bring them back and then talk about them it melting watch what happens once it melts what do all the colors make um so just something as simple as that um you and can also yeah so if you can also um uh, using your large muscles, um, to, uh, we can roll the ball ones. We yeah. have to flip this one. Can we stack them? Will this go on on there? Um, let's see how fast we can do it. Let's see how slow we can do it. Let's do it together. So we're working together, you know, to an end. Um, have a race. <laughs> you yeah. know, 
get everybody grab their ball and 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 roll it and let's see and let's make paths in the snow with these as well and then if there's snow out there you could actually roll and make a snow a snowman ball and see and then put it by that you can use those balls to create part of your snowman or maybe you're making a snake outside or a caterpillar or maybe it's part of your house um so again many different ideas um so this other one down in the bottom is just a little girl that's making a rainbow outside she sure is proud of it um again you can use um empty bottles um you could use paint brushes you could use sprayers um, many different things that you could use um, for the children which is really fun and then this other one is a little girl she's just painting on an easy outside um, so again if you have a piece of acrylic um, you could use um, temper paint you could put paint in spray bottles you can use um, temper paint markers um, chalk. You know, chalk yep markers yeah chalk it'll go on there as well and you can actually use play-doh the play-doh sticks to the acrylic which is great it gives it a like 3d dimension for the children and before you note it notice the children have created their own little world on there with um planer or plaster scene and i know right now it's a little bit harder but again these are things that not just to do now that there's things that you can take and carry on to do better and we will get through this and get over this that we will belt and absolutely back to doing some of, <laughs> some of those things um which is great um and then now we're going to talk about some games so lynn is our game expert so she's going to uh she's going to talk about it some yeah. games thanks megan uh the picture, the games pictured here are scholars choice ex ex exclusive games uh, games are great G games teach you know strategies turn taking rules um just and working together our cooperation, game which is, you know, cooperation and turn taking and being able to um, strategize. I don't know just what happened to that slide, but um, <laughs> I think, um, like if you're working together in pairs, because some games you can work together in pairs versus doing it by yourself. So again, being able to problem solve together and being able to accept no, you know what, we're going to go with Johnny's idea and see if it works. So being able to let go of wanting to do it your way and working with um, your partner. So, yeah, I'm just going to start this back up, Lynn, and then there we go. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, lots of things going on with these. Again, you know, not only the turn taking, but strategies with chess, checkers, um, numer learning numeracy with the uh, the one on the bottom. And the math squared at the top, great mathematical game. Again, strategy, math, a lot of a lot of things happening. They're made of sustainable wood, so they're going to last you for a long time. Just take them with you. You can do them outside as well. And then the so the chess and checker checkers and the Chinese checkers, so they're actually reversible. So the board's on both sides. But again, you could actually um, play checkers outside. You could create your um, own table with um, uh, tape or you could paint your board on um, so again it's you know what if you don't have a board it's okay you could create a board you could create a board inside um, and just use whatever pieces you have um, to play the game which is great take, yeah take the board outside and somebody collects stones and somebody collects pink stones and that's how you change so it, it you know, don't just leave them inside on your shelves. Take them outside. Use different things. You know, find different things to how, ways to use it as well. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> these ones, all right. These are these are all great games. Uh, Alphabet Bingo, exactly what it is. Just a little bit changed from the number um, Bingo. Bullseye. It's a matching game. But the great thing about Bullseye is. Uh, yeah, it's kind of a, a real fun and energetic game. And you use plungers to match your your cards. So it can get a bit rowdy and, and lots of fun. You, you know, take that by um, 
uh, you can create a, a big one of your own. You know how they always have those large games. Um, just out of circles and plungers, clean toilet plungers. <laughs> you can match, you know, go and match, match. But again, if you, if you need to remove the plunger, you could do yeah. different things. You could just have the children, um, you know, match. Yeah. Yeah. Um, or use a piece to put on top that they've matched the two. So again, you could make, um, make accommodations to make it work with the environment that you're in. Um, so yeah. And then the, the squirrel. The squirrel. Yeah. The great mm -hmm. games is there's always the rules and then five, usually a lot of our the games we pick up have five different ways to play it. But then there's the, the modifications that you can make. Um, remove half of the cards. So it's for a younger child, uh, you know, add something in, just change the rules, right? Uh, just let the, each one of these, you can just don't have to play the game. You can just match sneaky squirrels, matches acorns to holes, just have them match the acorns and the holes. So you don't necessarily always have to play the games. Yeah, which is great that you can, you know, any games are great to play with children, whether um, you can do it in your center or whether it's um, at home. Um, and, you know, given that things are different right now, um, you know, to try and include grandparents in that, maybe you can do um, a Zoom call with them or if, you know, yeah. grandparents don't have a Zoom call, you could just have your child call them and put it on speakerphone and maybe for the alphabet bingo, you ask them to go around and get different items that start with A or, um, you know, so there's ways to make it work and we just have to be able to make some changes to it and be adaptable. But there's still ways that we can, um, you know, make it work and still make it the best that we can right now with everything that's going on. But games are great. Children love games. And it's a great way to do things together as it bring the family together as well. Um, and then this one. Yeah. Uh, these are for a, a little older children, six and up. Again, a lot of the matching games, all with a different twist. The pull here and the spot it. Spot it has been very popular for a long time out of a card with seven, seven things on it, seven items on it. And another card with seven items on it, only one thing matches. So it's kind of a, as you see in the Harry Potter one, only one thing matches. Again, it's a matching game and you can, you know, if you're playing with somebody else or you can, as Megan said, you can play teams. Uh, if you see that match, uh, you see the match and then you get the card. Children can do it by themselves as well. They can flip it over and um, and just match and put their, 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 um, their sets aside. Conezilla is a matching game as well. You flip those over and then you're, you're trying to build a 10 scoop high cone. But the catch is if you pick it, they all have numbers on them. If you pick a 10, the next one has to be greater than 10. So that's, that's a big challenge. That's the rules of the game, but there's other ways you can play it again. Let's see if we can get all, you know, pink scoops on there or um, numbers in, in uh, succession. So there's lots of other ways you can do that. Stiello is uh, a little more dimensional. It's not flat paper. And you're again matching colors. You divide them up and you match it up. Again, that you can lose those loose parts, what we call loose parts. The kids, the children can just connect the, the colors or just use it as a mosaic to create. So again, there's the game, and then there's the what you can do further to uh, entice the child. Right. And I know um, a couple of people were asking about stuff for infants, so I just want to um, mention this one now before I forget. But even if you have a box with a lid, you could cut, um, for example, say you cut out um, – circles and then if you have larger pom-poms or anything that's that um shape you could give that to them and then it's just like a shape sorter game to, for them but again you've adapted it in a little bit easier for them it's something that you have just made um so you could do pom-poms and they're different text, text, textures for children if you have bigger size bulbs um 
so different things like that that you could adapt to in a game. You're just making it yourself if you have boxes. Um, so that's an idea there. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just going to go on. So what we're going to go on to here is some crafts. Um, so the first one is um, they're just actually silicone um, different shapes. So there's people and houses. Um, so using those to um, paint with. Um, whether you put the paint in a tray for a child or just put it on the paper and let them create what they'd like. Um, again, understanding that it is, you know, we are going through COVID right now and we have to make changes and, you know, work things out. But if you can do it and give the child their own little um, tray um, and put a little bit of paint on them for them, you could use cars, rolling the cars through with the wheels. You could use balls, yeah. older children. You could use marbles. Um, so that's one. Um, do you want to do the next one, Lenny? Um, no, that, go ahead. OK, so um, so this one, we just had the children make um, Christmas a Christmas tree. So you could use it out of sticks or straws. Again, if you don't have straws, maybe outside you have different sticks. Um, and the children could create it. Um, maybe you have paper and you can roll the paper up um, to give it that effect. Um, but again, you can make it a little bit easier or harder depending on the age of the children. Um, if you have popsicle sticks, um, again, like I said, um, if you maybe you have straws or use paper, construction paper, and just roll it up for the children, maybe you have. Um, the paper towel holders, um, maybe you have empty um, containers that you can use. Um, and then the next one, this little girl, she was making a spiral. Um, so she just has her paper and she's making it how she wants. She just was given a piece of paper and she's making a spiral. And however it turns out, it turns out. it's She's using her imagination, using her fine motor skills. She's very concentrated on doing it. And once she's done, you could hang them from the ceiling. Um, maybe she wants to make a snake from it, um, whatever. But there's lots of ways to make changes and adapt the, the crafts. Um, you want to go on here, Lynn, or you want me to do one? Yeah, keep going. I've got all okay. the... <laughs> um, so the one I see is... They just made a wreath, um, so different color pom-poms. But again, you could use rocks, you could use pine cones, and it doesn't have to be a wreath. It could just be a circle. It could be whatever they like. Um, again, maybe you have buttons, whatever. It's, it doesn't have to be pom-poms. There's always ways to make changes. Um, the first one, they just made some stars. Again, if you want to make it more... Um, in line with Christmas or Hanukkah or if you want it to be like that or maybe you just want to make winter ones and um, so you want to make snowflakes um, and then the one in the middle the little girl was making um, Christmas trees so a tree. she's using you know she's using what she's got there and she's going to it and making it her own way so you know what, which is great if we just help and guide them and provide some resources and then let them create what they come up with. Um, so we've got some different crafts here. Um, again, just using resources that, um, that you have is great. I'm just going to go actually go on to the next slide, though, because I want to be able to get through some more of these. Yes. Um, so after his one of Lynn and mine's favorite, of course, favorite. is loose parts um, and tough trays. Again, you don't have to have a tough tray. Maybe you have a cookie sheet. Maybe you just have a tin foil pie plate. Um, maybe you've got a bowl. Um, you, you can use anything. Anything that you have will work to put loose parts in it um, for the children. So the first one, they're doing some ice cube painting. Um, and there's other different resources in there. Um, you want to go on to the next one, Lynn? The next well, I was just going to say, um, it, we use the, the term tough trays. If we have some parents on there, what a tough tray. This is a tough tray. It is a, a, a large, a large, large black tray. It has a, a lip on it. Um, you can see it in the middle slide as well. 
it has a spout to go on or to pour things off, but it's really very durable. Uh, you can just put it on the floor. You can do amazing things with it. It, it has, it gives children space to do things. You can do messy things in it. But if we refer to a tough tray, that is what a tough tray is. Yeah. Um, so again, and I see somebody asking, can you use loose parts in right now? So absolutely. Yes. Some centers, oh, you can't use wood, which is you don't need wood to be yeah. um, loose parts. Um, it doesn't have to be wood. It can be all plastic. Um, yeah. You know what, you don't even have to, you could have loose parts which are just utensils, utensils and maybe water. Um, yeah. So yeah, it doesn't It doesn't have to be wood. Loose parts don't just have to be wood. Do you got some things there, Lynn? I'm gonna stop this so I can make you bigger so people can see what you got there. Uh, loose parts, seashells. Seashells are loose parts. Anything that comes apart, we have, um, uh, buttons, you can use buttons, jumping there. See what? Scarves, the scarves. Yep, yeah. yeah, the scarves, they, they, you know, bring out the scarves. They, they're they great for dancing, put them over, you know, over things, change the colors. That's a loose part. Anything that you can disassemble and use in a different way. And those animals, Lynn, do you have plastic animals there? I, got, I have plastic animals. I have other animals. I have my, my dinosaur, they're always in there. Um, rubber bait fish from Canadian Tire. They go great with, if you never got to your uh, your beach vacation, kinetic sand in here. Seashells, my thing, just let them in, you know, let them play. I've got but again, you could just use water in there if you didn't. Yep. And um, you know what, you could, the children could collect pieces of the real trees outside. Yeah. Um, whatever you have for them to create um, something. Yeah, loose parts. Uh, I'm just gonna loose start. parts, anything that you can use for a different purpose. Lots of things, and we do have a loose parts section in our catalog that has uh, yeah, lots of different ideas. Yeah, absolutely. So here's a little boy here. He's got his construction hat on and he is, then you want to talk about this one? Yeah, yes. <laughs> Um, this was one of my displays that I set up, put it in the basement. And he, we had a plaster scene in there and he went to use it. He tried to cut it with the scissors, but then found that, you know, wanted to do something different with it. We always have, we always have a dramatic play close by, but he had to get his hammer. But if he's going to hammer it, he had to have his hat, his <laughs> hat on. And he had his safety goggles on. They Actually, they were around his neck by now. But those are all loose parts. Those are all sealed. And, you know, that's what he wanted to do in that. And it just, they're in there and they create what the world that they want to be in and play with right now. Right. Yeah. Um, so the next one is, it's just actually a rainbow trough tray. So anything that you have that's colored, and if you're in a center, because we can't use wood right now, anything that's plastic um, that you could put in there and create a rainbow, um, mixing colors. So if you can add water, um, mixing colors, um, put pieces of paper in. And again, we can adapt it and just use smaller trays for the children. So they each have their own individual tray. Um, yes. So again, different ways to adapt. Um, the next one is a tundra. So again, different animals where they live. Um, there is some wood pieces in there, but again, you can adapt it and uh, make something else. So maybe you have some plastic bridges, uh, arches that you could use. Um, yes. You could put some real snow in there. Um, I think that's Insta Snow that's in there. Yeah. Uh, but again, there's the magnifying glasses. So just being able to make um, the idea, giving the children something to start with. There's, um, these stones in there. Um, so again, talking about footprints with animals, um, mm -hmm. pieces could go outside as well. Um, get Take your tough trays outside. Yeah. Yeah, they're great because they can collect the items, put it in the tough tray and organize. Yeah. yeah. So the next one here we have is talking about different shapes. Um, so again, yes, there's wood pieces in here, but 
you don't have to use wood. Um, you know, whatever you have in the classroom or in your house. Um, so maybe if the children are younger, you just pick one shape to start with and have them go around and collect whatever they think is a circle. Um, talk about the different weights of the circle. Does the circle have edges? Um, what do they feel like? Are they smooth? Are they rough? Um, so again, you, the older your children are, you could introduce more. Maybe you just start with one and go from there. Um, the next one is colors, which is great because again, there's different shades of colors. Um, Lynn, you want to talk about that one a little bit? No, I'm good. That's yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, so yeah. again, you talk about the different um, colors. Um, so it could be mauve. It could be crimson. Um, you know, introducing the older children to the different colors, even the younger children, um, they can learn these words and see that there's different colors. Maybe then they can start to make that color green. And what do you have to do to make green? Maybe you have crayons and pencil crayons, markers, different shades. The harder they color, the darker it's going to be. Um, like as Megan says, um, just going back to the colors, it's not just green, it's emerald green. It's yeah. What, what green is this looks like um evergreen green like it looks like a green tree the um a green leaf it looks uh, uh emerald green light light green dark green in shoes all those different um adjectives and different labels so you know they even uh grow the, the their vocabulary it's just not green Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, I'm just we're just going to go through these last few quickly because I would like yeah. Emily to come on and because um, I know we've got some downloadable stuff that we want to be able to um, share with you guys um, because lots of these ideas we have that our um, marketing team at Scholars Choice has put together. So we have a whole site that you can go and download different activities. Um, so another thing to do is stuff with lights. Um, so again, adding flashlights out, putting flashlights under the table, um, the scarf set Lynn had, um, putting that over top of the lights. Um, so creating different lights and environment. The children love it. They, you know, turn out the lights and create yeah. different, um, you know, colors for the children. Um, the next one is um, mirrors and um, putting different things on mirrors. So again, seeing the reflection, seeing how the colors um, bounce off the mirrors, having them look at themselves in the mirror. What do they look like? How do they feel? How are they feeling today? Um, and then this, you know, any scarves um, that are transparent, putting them over the mirrors with stuff inside them, hiding stuff inside the scarves for the children, um, which is great. Scarves. Um, and then construction, um, block play building, which is great. I mean, put whatever items you have out there and let them build with it. Goodness gracious, at home, if you have Tupperware, put the Tupperware out. And it's usually the favorite drawer that babies <laughs> like to go to anyway. Um, but they can build with those. They can build towers. They can build houses, whatever they want. And then these children... So the one on the bottom, they created a little fort and they got themselves in it. Um, and then the next one, I mean, it's it's huge. But again, it's hours of play hours and of lots and lots of conversations that can happen in there um, and take place. Yeah. We had these at uh, Ontario Place and um, the, the, the um, actual workers at that, the actual scientists at the the, at Ontario Place got involved with the children because they were making a tower and they started saying with them, well, how are you going to get the product? How are you going to make the, uh, make it taller? And then they discovered that, well, if we put it up and built it up, that we could get it taller. So a lot going on with straws. This is the greatest toy. Um, and then um, another one is puzzles puzzles are great um again it's a great thing that you can um do together as a family um you know you can get puzzles that are much easier to do for children two or three piece puzzles um you could even create your own puzzle with just paper and rip them apart for the children to put together um do different pictures on it um and again this is something maybe 
I know our guy does it with his grandparents and he just puts the phone on speakerphone while he's talking to his grandpa doing a puzzle. So it's just having that conversation, knowing that his grandpa's there with him and they're both doing a puzzle, but they're not together. Um, and then, so we actually have some provocation cards. Um, they're going to be um, sent out in the follow up tomorrow and you can actually mm -hmm. download them. And I think there's, six activities is that right emily 13. Oh, okay so and there's a bunch of activities in there and you can just download them so this is just an example so it gives you some ideas and on the other side it talks about different parts so what did you create it gives different conversation starters to have with the children so those are going to go out tomorrow in the follow-up we're going to put the slides out with all the ideas that lynn and i talked about as well yeah. as there is, um, we have, again, what I said our marketing team did is a downloadable page and there's many activities on there. And you can just go in and download the activities. Um, so yeah, lots of ideas to, to share. I'm just gonna stop this lens. I mean, Emily, so there, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> And then, um, actually, I have a link for the provocation card. So all you have to do is fill out your information and it'll email them to you and get you on the list for the provocation yes, cards. And if you want to, well, Mom's if you don't, uh, if you don't want to uh, download them, um, we are selling them for $9.99 for the 13 cards. So mm -hmm. lots of people don't want to download and to uh, spend the money on printing them. So, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to excuse myself because I'm going to go get them to show. So, okay. people. so there's 13 cards. Our first set is 13. Mm -hmm. uh, we are looking at issuing uh, one set a month. Um, so hopefully for We're another. Looking at, we are doing that. We are. Um, <laughs> so our first 13 are out. It was a baker's dozen for the first set, but the next set will be 12. Um, and so look for different provocations for you to assist in the classroom. We will always allow them to be downloaded for free, but if you want to buy them because uh, you don't want to, to download them, that's absolutely okay as well. And Megan has the cards there. So it's like a recipe card. It's the size of a recipe card. The front is the activity, and then the back is, um, like I said, there's different conversation starters that you can ask. So it's the size of a recipe card, and they're actually, it's like, um, it's laminated. Yeah. 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 So they're printed on um, like card a cardstock. Card yeah. 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 So this it's is what they are. And then the other side. So again, like Cindy said, you can get them. Um, it's $9.99 for this set. Um, so maybe we'll put the code in that goes out tomorrow with the follow up. You guys have that. Um, but again, they're great. And then you said they didn't want to download them. And so that's why we did this as well. Yeah. We're trying to make it as accessible as humanly possible. So we. So one of the that. things I wanted to show you is I bought, um, I don't know, I bought this Dawn Power Wash. And when I was talking, when you guys were talking about spraying paint, when this is empty, this would be the perfect spray bottle for paint oh, out right. in the uh, snow. Yeah. So just even looking at things that you have yeah. at home to use for spray painting. Um, and then I just wanted to go back to the cards. So there's yeah. like... There's reflection ones, there's sensory ones, there's block, there's fun with letters, um, there's nature one. Um, so there's all different ideas. They're not just all the same. So it covers off many different ideas. Um, and again, stuff that you can do throughout the whole year. So and it's really for parents and for teachers. Absolutely. So you could use them. That's why um, we made them um, that you could easily share them. Yeah, and you can you can just make changes and to them, yeah. which is yeah. great. Um, with they're, whatever yeah, you want, just gives the all, yeah they're for all age groups. You just yeah. you know you know you can take it up or or modify it down. Yeah, if I can make them in our office by myself, you can surely make them at home with assessments. <laughs> I gotta tell you. Um, and it was actually really cool. This webinar featured a lot of my activities on Instagram. So if you want to give us a follow, if you liked some of those ideas, uh, definitely check us out. I just put it in the comments and I'll put it up at the top. Not to be a shameless self-promoter, but I think I do a decent job. So <laughs> definitely check out all of our ideas. So definitely have a look at that. And then we honestly didn't have a lot of questions. I'm not gonna lie. There are a lot of just real appreciation for the kind of activities we talked about. I know a lot of people were wondering about some more snow activities and ideas, or um, 
ideas for older kids, probably between more seven to 12. Yeah. Any feedback for that, Megan? Um, seven to 12. Let me, let me sit with it tonight and we'll, I'll put some ideas in the follow up that goes out tomorrow. I'll send it to marketing to put in it. So I will, I will put some more ideas for older children. And um, we'll work on, look at some, I saw somebody say uh, games for infants too. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's Very good. simple. Yeah. You have that. And then I wanted to address a couple comments I saw because you guys had me. I run for my money. Oh my gosh. We're putting in links. Um, if you can't do a light table, I highly suggest a light panel. Light panels are also a really great option if you want one for at home or also for in your area because they're very easy to clean and they're also a bit more cost effective if you're into that. And Fraser is asking, do you have suggestions for toddler centers as safe and not food related? So while I think that yeah. Okay. A lot of those. Um, and also the other thing for the light table is you could just use um, flashlights to get yourself started as well. Turn the flashlights up and if you put like one of the scarfs Lynn has or a clear bin over top of it for now, it, yeah. it's something that gets you started. Um, Christmas lights too actually. Christmas, yeah. the, the battery operated lights in a, um, a clear container with a lid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then put the scarves in it. Um, so you can change the color that way as well. Yeah. So lots of great feedback, uh, ladies, for wonderful um, ideas. ideas. Thank you. Um, you both put in a lot of effort, and uh, we really appreciate everything that you do for us. And thank you to the scholars. And oh, there's a sensory question. Sorry. Yeah. We haven't answered this poor lady's question. Sensory ideas other than food. So we said, oh, like. Oh, sorry, like, I wrote it down, M. So I'm yes. going to. I'm going to come up with some ideas and we'll, I'll send them for, to yeah. go over for tomorrow. Okay. Winner. Yeah. So we have anything else we want to share? So we had one lady that said, thank you for the great ideas that you've shared over the entire um, yeah. year. And uh, so that's very great too. Yeah. And we want to just say thank you to all of you for continuing to come on yeah. and to support us. And um, you know, sure. it, it's great. And thank you very much to scholars for, um, Hosting them and helping us and our marketing team. I mean, there's a lot of effort that goes in. A lot of effort goes in. Yeah, into all of it. And um, we will see everybody again. And so we really want to wish everybody a happy holidays. holidays. I know uh, for us, it's going to be very different. Um, we will not be seeing extended family, which is the no. first time ever. So, um, and I'm sure that most of you will be experiencing the same thing. And so, we really want you to spend the time with your immediate family and do these things indoors, outdoors, just so you can make this Christmas special as well. Yeah. yeah. And stay yeah. safe and just know there's lots of things that you can do. We just have to change it up a little bit. Be creative. Uh, yeah. yeah. Look for, go to our downloads page. Uh, we yeah. did, you know, lots of things for you to do over the holiday yeah. season. Some example of what's on the downloads page because that's my page, is um, there are coloring pages, there is a kindness calendar, there's an activities calendar, there's an ideas for social distancing during the holidays, there is, oh my gosh, I don't even know, there is word puzzles. searches, there's yeah. puzzles, there's all kinds of things. So please make sure to go have a look at that and we will be adding more things as we go before the holidays start. Um, there is links in the, at the very top, we have links right now for publication cards for the download page for Instagram, if you like doing it. And let me see if we have anything else going on that I'm forgetting about. The but that stuff will go out tomorrow too, everybody. So it will yeah. go out in the follow-up. Yes. Yeah, so we will have, oh yeah, I'm getting a link for the certificate because I always forget that. So in the comments now is the link for tonight's survey. So please fill that out. You will receive your certificate as soon as our information pulls through. So probably about half an hour. So go make sure to fill that out, give us some feedback. And I can see that you all love this and we appreciate that. So I think that's all from us. Be safe, be well, happy holidays. Thanks for joining us and we'll see you in the new year. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Have a wonderful night. Bye. Bye-bye.